Behind me, that's the Eiffel Tower, but I am not in Paris, I am in Macau, China, and in today's video, we are going to check in into one of the most luxurious hotels I have ever stayed at, the Parisian Hotel in Macau. I will take you with me all along for the experience, and we will also explore the city together with some of my friends, try some food, and do what this city is most famous for, gambling. Let's see how lucky I got with that, and let's find out what it's like to stay in this luxury fake Paris hotel in Macau, China, feel free to join. Okay, so here it is, the fake Paris hotel and everything inside and around the hotel looks like France. All right, it looks already pretty posh and luxurious just standing here and looking at it from the outside. All right, so we have stairs here, water running down here. Oh, I actually like the sound of that. Yeah, I mean already the details here. It really uh, resembles uh, being in France right here. And this is not just fake plastic or something, this is proper and solid here. Yeah, Macau is one of the richest places in the world. I think the per capita GDP is actually the highest in the world. And that is of course because this city is full with casinos. It's the gambling hotspot in Asia, making seven times more revenue per year than Las Vegas in the USA. And Macau is smaller than Las Vegas. There are less casinos here. Oh, also the music in the background, very calm saxophone jazz music, I think. Wow, excuse me. Where's chicken? Chicken. Chicken? Over there. Okay, thank you. Wow, what an entrance to a hotel. And here, of course, every hotel here is also a casino. And usually there's also a mall attached to it. So shopping opportunities, restaurants, all of that. But wow, what a posh entrance here. Wow. Yeah, I'm almost out of words. Already at the check-in. Okay, so I guess, oh yeah, hotel reception right here. Looks pretty busy. I think this is the busiest hotel reception I ever saw in my life. But this is also the most beautiful reception I ever saw in my life. Let's see if I can check in already. Hello, check in here? Check in. Yeah, looks like a long waiting line. Yeah. What do you think, how long is the waiting time? I think around 40 minutes. 40 minutes, yes. just to check in. Uh, let's see how long we need. It is now 1.20 p.m. Hello, Hello. good afternoon. May I have your passport and sure. maybe sleep? Right, here we go. Thank you so much. All right, I can check in now. The time was only 25 minutes, not too long. I think this is the most beautiful lobby I've ever seen. Thank you so much. This looks so beautiful here. Do you know if these paintings are original? Or is it uh, like, no, it's not original, not original it's right? Copy, yes. copy paintings. But it looks pretty impressive here. So the lobby is already a great first impression here. How many rooms do you have here in total? Uh, in total we have the, the 2,500. 2,500 rooms? Yes. Wow. Today is a Friday actually and on the weekend uh, Macau gets uh, busier because many people from Hong Kong or from mainland China coming over. Alright, that was a very smooth check-in experience to be honest. But now I have to navigate through this big building here to find my room. So we have several wings, of course several floors. I am going to be located on the 27th floor. He said that's one of the highest floors. Ah, here we go, hotel rooms north. I am in the north wing. Wow, so in order to get to your room, you have to walk through the mall, basically. Yeah, over there is the entrance to the casino here in the hotel. And yeah, it looks very posh. Just walking around here feels like, wow, this is incredible. So we have floor one to 19 on the left side and floor 20 to 29 on the right side. Whew, I'm very excited for the room, actually. If you're staying in such a posh hotel, this might be the luxurious hotel I've ever stayed at. And uh, I'm very excited for the room. If I'm staying in very nice hotels, the rooms are always something uh, exciting, you know? Let's see what we can expect here. Wow, okay. This looks very good, guys. Let me put off my bags and then I will show you around. Uh, wow, okay. Let's start with the bathroom first before I will show you the room. So this is the entrance area here. We have a little closet with a uh, yeah, standard, a little safety box here, some bathrobes. Okay, nothing too special. But then the bathroom, wow, this is a luxurious looking bathroom, right? Oh, I like it. I like the, the bright white colors here. Oh, we have a bathtub, we have the toilet here, a nice walk-in shower. Wow. Oh, plenty of space in here. Whew. Unfortunately, oh, no rainfall shower. That would be a bit better, but I'm not complaining. This is already quite nice as well. A lot of space here, several different towels here. Let's see what's in the box here. Maybe some shampoo. 
euer Dental Kits, Lotion, Pump, Shower Cap, okay. More towels here, towels down there. Okay, and then this is the room. And look at the huge bed here. Oh, I love it when hotel, hotels provide you with an extra space to keep your luggage. Some hotels don't have that. A lot of space here as well, a big TV, a little, oh, actually very beautiful little desk right here. Oh, I like that. Wow, let me quickly have a seat here. Oh, not planning to do any work today. Today is my holiday day. Oh, I did press something, no, okay. Oh, little, oh, to be honest, I like to keep these uh, little papers in uh, hotels because I like to write down notes. I'm quite old school. I like to write down my notes on a piece of paper instead of uh, typing it into my phone. So I always keep these little papers in a hotel. And then this is probably for Wi-Fi here, a charging station, in-room dining, which we are probably going to have a look at in the evening. And then the view. Check this out. Whoa. -ho -ho -ho. Oh, wow, this is great. So we have one, two, three, four, five pool areas, but the one over there doesn't seem to be in use because there's no water. But it looks like for children, there's a little pirate boat or something. Wow, guys, what should I say? The view is phenomenal here. And yeah, we're going to check out the pool area um, in a bit as well. Yeah, let's also check out the bed. I mean, <laughs> what a big bed is this? You can probably fit easily three persons in here. Okay, let's check it out. Ah, oh, oh, it's way harder than I was expecting to be honest. Oh, oh, <laughs> maybe it's too hard for me. I prefer softer beds to be honest. This is always very hard. Whew. Okay, oh, but the pillows, oh, the pillows seem to be very nice. Oh yeah, the pillow is very nice. And I have four pillows to choose from, but the bed is very hard to be honest. Whew. Uh, I'm complaining on a high level here now. I'm, I'm sure the sleep will still be all right, but I prefer softer beds and this is actually very hard. Um, oh, there's actually a pillow menu here. Neck counter pillow, memory pillow, buckwheat pillow, lavender pillow, synthetic pillow. Dear guest, Parisian Macau is pleased to offer a selection of pillows for your exceptional night's rest. Please call priority service for the pillow of your choice. So if you're not happy with the pillows, you can just call and I will bring you another pillow. Well, let's check out what we do have here. There's a mini bar here with nothing inside. But uh, to be honest, he asked me at the check-in if I want the mini bar to be filled up. So if I would have said yes, then probably they would have brought some things. The refrigerator is emptied for your usage as you desire. We are happy to personalize with your favorite drinks and snacks should you wish. Yeah, so you can call them and then they will provide you with drinks and snacks if you want. I'm missing a kettle and a coffee station, oh, which we do have right here. Water, Nescafe, Dilma tea. Okay, nothing too special. And yeah, the price I'm paying here is uh, $150 for the night. Uh, I did pay a bit extra for a view of the Eiffel Tower. So if you have a room probably on the other side of the building, I think it would have been around $30 less if you don't choose to have the Eiffel Tower view. But I thought, hey, I'm going to stay in the Paris Hotel, so I wanna have the view of the Eiffel Tower. And I'm really excited to see the view in the night. So we're going to see that later. But I think, let's check out the pool area. Wow, this area looks amazing as well. And then you can yeah, enjoy the outdoor facilities with a view to the Eiffel Tower. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can I? Uh, yes, I'm just, I just checked in, so I just want to have a look. Okay, certainly. Yeah. So you can write down your uh, floor and the room number. Please, oh. Raver then, liability. Yes. The pool is heated, right? Yes. It's oh. keeping the temperature around 28 to uh, 28. 30. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. And also the massage pools were going to be, that temperature will yeah. be a little bit higher, okay. 38. All right, so we do have heated pools and yeah, the weather temperature is around 20 degree maybe. Not really the temperature where you just want to relax by the pool, you know. You also you see me wearing a sweatshirt, so it is a bit chilly here. Hello, good afternoon. I'm just here to have a quick look. Jacuzzi? Jacuzzi as well. Ah, 38 degrees. Very friendly staff here. That's very nice. I mean, obviously you expect that kind of when you stay in a place like this. I can imagine if this is the summertime and it's proper sunshining, then 
I would actually spend probably the, the whole day here today. And yeah, the view to the tower is right here. And then we have, this seems to be like a big hall. And you see all the, the faces there that really looks like I am in Paris now in France. And then we have the astonishing building here. So my room, one of the, the windows over there. Okay, I got a little bit lost. I took the elevator to the fifth floor. And then you end up in uh, this part of the mall here. There's a food court actually. But I just see there's a fake sky here which looks actually quite cool. And then down there, there's a chef making a show or something. He looks like a French chef. I think he's making a little bit of a show. Oh, check it out. <laughs> Sometimes you go to these fake cities or something like that and everything is plastic and it looks really nice from the outside. But once you go closer and have a look into the details, you notice it's more fake than real. But here, all of these things here this is all proper solid and not just plastic wow and it's to be honest it's not just this building here um, I stayed in another hotel uh, the past days and also there the hotel was also inside a mall it was the London themed mall so everything looks like you are in London and here everything is French themed so every mall here in Macau, basically every hotel slash casino slash mall is looking like this, to be honest. Here we go, Eiffel Tower, and there's a shop attached to it, a souvenir shop, which I do remember from last year. But here we have the entrance, and there are also like um, pictures here about the history of the actual Eiffel Tower in Paris. So we have some historic pictures right here, where this tower was uh, built. Ah, here we go, a proper picture of the Eiffel Tower in Paris which is of course taller than the one here so this one is a smaller version of it but the look is actually quite the same I don't want to go to the top just to the um, seventh floor it's three right and the top is 75 okay so if you do want to go to the top you have to pay 75 of the local currency I keep forgetting the name of it to be honest but since I have actually been up there last year I'm okay now with the observation deck on this floor. But yeah, I can show you some footage of the view from the top, which I took about a year ago. So you can see the view right now, overlooking the whole main road here. And then actually a pretty good view over the whole area around here. So that actually was quite cool. But yeah, is it worth around 10 US dollar extra just to go up there? Well, I guess you have to decide that for yourself. Hello. Are you taking photos here? What's the view here? I can I can see on the screen. Yeah, like that. Ah, like this. Yeah. Ah. So you take uh, pictures for tourists here? Yeah, if you yeah. like, you can. But you can try. Oh, I'm good. I don't need pictures. I'm just curious what you do here. Oh. So people pay you and you take pictures? Yeah. yeah. How much you take for one picture? One thirty-eight. One picture. Again, thirty-eight. One thirty-eight. One hundred thirty-eight. Yeah, one hundred thirty-eight. For one picture. For one picture. Oh. Okay. He's making good money out here, I think. Oh, I'm good. I don't need pictures. Oh, okay. oh, but thank you very much. Did you really say 138 for one picture? That's like $15 or so. Making good money here then, I guess. Um, anyway, so what's interesting here, we have all these uh, love locks here, which uh, we also have at the original Eiffel Tower in Paris. Actually, this is also very popular in Germany, where I am from, that people place these uh, love locks at certain places. And that is supposed to... Uh, yeah, bring good luck for their relationship. But I'm actually not sure if these are like fake to, to uh, create the atmosphere here, like these very old ones here. Maybe they are actually real, I'm not sure. And then we have the newer ones here. So I can imagine that sometimes they like remove the old ones so that people can actually place new ones here. But yeah, this is the Eiffel Tower here. Actually, I'm not sure how high it is, but it is definitely shorter than the original one in Paris. But it is not as crowded here as at the original one. I have been to the Eiffel Tower many, many years ago when I was, uh, I don't know, 12 years old or so. So that's a while ago. But I remember it was super crowded and there was a long queue to uh, take the elevator up. So here you can visit the Eiffel Tower without a big crowd. And then yeah, this is the main road here, the main casino area in Macau. So all of the buildings you see here are hotels slash casinos slash malls. So there's a casino everywhere here. But the difference to, for example, Las Vegas, which is known as the casino capital of the world, um, this is actually much shorter. The main road in Las Vegas is way longer. And you can see here, this is already the end of it, basically. 
but I do think that there is a lot of construction going on all around here. So maybe in five to ten years, I think Macau will be way bigger than it is right now. You can see that they are pushing a lot of money into here. And also we have these little garden areas here, which actually, let's go down there and have a look from up close. Also the little park area there. Okay, so what's interesting is that we also have this park here, which also looks exactly like the park that you can find in front of the original Eiffel Tower. Obviously also here, it's not as big as the original one, but also in front of the Eiffel Tower in Paris, you do have a park like this with a direct straight view to the Eiffel Tower. And yeah, very typical for China. You see lots of girls here, nicely dressed up to take uh, pictures here. Chinese girls really like to take pictures. Actually, this is a nice shot here, right? If you walk here, you have the alleys here with the trees and the sun is shining through the trees here. Wow. Yeah, I can see that this makes actually quite a nice uh, photo location. And as you can see, plenty of people are taking pictures here. And now we're actually going to meet up with two of my friends who are also currently here in Macau and some of you may know them. Hey. Hello, yeah, please. Well, where you want to go, sir? Uh, Senado Square. Senado Square, okay. Yeah. See what you see next in there. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Ah, hello. Senado Square, please. Okay. okay, so Macau has basically two islands. We are coming from the southern island and we are going now to the main city area, which is on the northern island. Oh, keep the change. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Okay. Bye -bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. All right, here we are. We have arrived in the city center of uh, the old town here in Macau, the Senado Square right here, which I remember from the last time I was in Macau, which is quite exactly one year ago. And I do think I see my friends over there already. Hello, hello. Yo. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> ah, Hi. Hello, hello. How are you? Oh, welcome to Macau. <laughs> <laughs> You're in your sweater. Right? Yeah, maybe it's too hot. I wasn't sure. Okay, Hong Kong is what? not Hong Kong. We are in Macau. <laughs> okay, Macau is actually home to the best dessert I ever had anywhere in Asia. <laughs> and I'm going to show them my favorite dessert now, which is in a shop right over there. Yeah. This shop sells the best dessert I ever had anywhere in Asia. And that is actually right this one right here. Milk pudding. Okay. So uh, let's give it a try. Sounds good. Oh, it looks busy. Hello. Uh, three. Okay. Hello. So they not only have desserts here, they also have lots of other delicious things, which I cannot, cannot read at the moment. Oh, this is a pork bun. Oh, there's the English. Ah, English. Oh, milk pudding. Ah, yeah, I'm here for the milk pudding. Oh. Uh, should we get three regular milk puddings? Sure. Sure, for try and then we see if we want other food as okay, well. Okay, we'll yeah. start with dessert. Okay, three yeah. milk pudding. Just uh, the regular one. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, what did I have last year? What, <laughs> oh. uh, what is better? Cold, right? Oh. Okay, cold. Three. 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 Okay. Sounds good. All right, and literally 20 seconds later, it's here already. Oh. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last year I ordered it too because it was so delicious. Yeah. How's the taste? It's super good. Really? Are you just saying that no, so no, I don't feel really bad? <laughs> it's not the super strong flavor, but the texture and the, and the temperature, Yeah. it's just delicious. Okay, let's see if mm. I still feel the same way. It actually would be even better if the weather was really hot. If it was really hot outside, it would be so good. Mm. Oh, it's so delicious. <laughs> oh, man. It's not like... There's not a super strong milky flavor to it, mm. right? It's just perfect, I would say. Mm -hmm. Almost like yogurt. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit like yogurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is delicious. <laughs> I have to say, though, my memory was a bit better than this. Oh. It's still very delicious. So maybe in the last 12 months they changed a little bit. Yeah. Or this is just... A, I mean, it's still super delicious, but... Not as good as I remember it. But maybe this is too cold because it's a little bit like it's frozen, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one I had last year was not frozen. There's almost a, a chewy part or a hard yeah, part. Yeah, but I think I did not have a chili version like this because there's mm. actually ice inside. Yours right? is frozen. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's much better if it's not frozen. Yours looks not as frozen as mine. No, mine the texture is quite good. I got lucky. Yeah. Maybe mine is a bit too frozen. So already finished. New record. Oh, he's the passive one out of all of us. <laughs> what I like about it is it's not too sweet. Yeah, right? Because sometimes it's a really good dessert, but it's just so much sugar. Exactly. You take one bite and you're like, okay, uh, this is kind of almost fresh and light. Yeah, that's, that's quite tasty. I think that's exactly what I like about it. Because it doesn't feel like you're eating a huge calorie sugar bomb. 
-hmm. I don't think that there's a lot of sugar in here. Right. So the taste is not that sugary, pretty light actually. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel bad after eating it, you know? Yeah. Right. Good breakfast. Oh, that's your breakfast? Yeah. Oh, that's the first thing we eat today. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's already uh, 2 p.m. <laughs> Late breakfast. Sure. All right, second round. So we have the main course after the dessert. Yeah. But we were still hungry. So this is actually a very popular food here in Macau and in Hong Kong as well. Pork chop in a bun. So this one is a fried pork chop. It looks like a German schnitzel. <laughs> a bit like a schnitzel. I think it's just butter. So it's a pretty yeah. simple flavor, but quite yeah. tasty. It's like a, like a good little snack. You can also find it as a street food. Yeah, nothing super special, but a great little snack. Pro what, are you, what are you doing? Pro <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit plain, no? So you I think it brought your own mustard. Uh, I really love oh. mustard. <laughs> Let's see what happens here, guys. Oh, Steve is the man full of surprises. <laughs> Suddenly he has mustard in his bag. <laughs> My drone had some mustard. Oh, wow. <laughs> so does it make it better? Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's better. Go ahead if you want. I don't really like mustard. Oh, really? If, if you bought ketchup, then I would have tried. Uh, okay. <laughs> me, I'm a mustard man myself. Oh, you can see it's a popular shop here. It's totally full since we are here. I do think actually this shop is a famous one. And actually, every single person is eating milk pudding. Yeah, right? Yeah, everyone is eating the, the milk pudding here. <laughs> Literally everyone. Yeah, it is a famous one. Okay, let's see how much we have to pay for three buns and three... 62 per person. Okay. Oh, that was delicious. So we are back at the square here. What I find really interesting here that it doesn't look Chinese anymore here. It looks like Europe actually. Yeah. It reminds me a lot about Portugal and that is because of the Portuguese uh, colonial history here of course. But that's why I think Macau is such an interesting place to visit because you have the contrast of like China meets Europe here basically. Really good first impression. Ivana and I have spent a lot of time in Brazil, yeah. which is also a Portuguese colony, and looks the same like this. Especially these black and white stones, yeah. sort of look like waves on the beach. This is very yeah, yeah. Uh, familiar to us. And all the architecture is a nice first impression. And also all the, the street signs here have Portuguese writing on it as well. Yeah. So Chinese and uh, Portuguese. Yeah. So really interesting city to explore. <laughs> like pork fat or something? I think pork fat? Pork fat, something like that. Salty and crispy. I think it's crispy oh. pork jerky. Try it out, try it out. What's the, what's the name? It's a pork. 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 Like pork skin maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's skin. Pork. Pork. Almost like, uh, like potato chips. I think it tastes almost like potato chips with a pork flavor to it. <laughs> interesting. But yeah, check out how busy it is here. So many people. I guess that... Um, or not, I guess, I know that this city is also very popular for tourists from Hong Kong and from mainland China to come over. Most of the people come here for gambling, but I think you can also come over here to do some shopping or try some food. So I actually do think that most of the people here are actually tourists. Okay, we are here now at one of the most famous spots in Macau, which is called... This is the front of the Cathedral of St. Paul, or in okay. Portuguese, São Paulo. But it looks like only the front is left. Yeah, only the front is left. So it's yeah. built in the early 1600s, okay. which is a long time ago. Yeah. And then it was destroyed in the 1800s, if you can believe it, by a storm. You would have thought it was destroyed by a cannonball or something. Yeah, but yeah. It was, it was collapsed by a storm, and so this remains. And with the steps going up to it, it's like a tourist attraction. Yeah. So many Instagram photos, it's really beautiful. And what amazes me is, right over here, you have a regular apartment and somebody's balcony. <laughs> <laughs> wow, imagine living there and exactly. having the view to one of the most famous yeah. spots here yeah. every day. I believe up here is a fort. A fort. Yeah. So Portuguese era again, and then for defense purposes, up on top of the hill, you yeah. can imagine the cannonballs coming off. So this is also from like the 1600s? I guess so, 1600s, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have a little bit of a view here overlooking Macau. Down there is where we're just coming from. And then you actually have a nice contrast here. So we have the very old uh, fort here. And then in the background we have the very modern side of Macau, the huge casino. Very interesting. We have a cannon here, which I'm wondering if this is an original one from back in the days or if it's just here for the tourists. <laughs> I mean, it looks it looks pretty it looks original, legit right? To me. <laughs> looks pretty like a solid yeah. proper gun here. We also have places like this in Germany, like historical old castles or something. And whenever you see a cannon like this in Germany, you know what people do? They put rubbish inside here. Ah, the worst. But I guess they don't do that in China. Let's have a look. Yeah, nobody does that here in China. 
In Germany, it's always full of trash. Good job, China. <laughs> and what a feeling. Imagine being here and you see ships coming and you're like, oh gosh, oh, God. load the cannons, go boom. I mean, <laughs> fighting for your life with cannonballs. Wow. It's crazy that that actually happened right here. People were, here. people were standing yeah. here a few hundred years ago yeah. and thinking exactly that. Probably someone died right here. <laughs> <laughs> now you're putting sorry, on. Sorry. <laughs> now the mood in the vlog changed. Probably someone <laughs> fought for their life and survived right here. And defended his wife defended, right here. Defended, <laughs> yes. Okay. Something like that. Sorry, sorry. Something heroic. So this is down there where we're coming from, the front of the remaining part of the cathedral. And then we have a view actually on the other side of the river. It's actually mainland China already. And then we have the residential areas. Yes, Macau is not only casinos and fancy hotels. They are also actually residential areas, which you can see right here. And they actually remind me a little bit of residential areas in Hong Kong, which you probably know is just over there, like a 30 minute bus ride. But yeah, nice view up here actually. So if you're coming from Macau, I recommend to uh, do the maybe 10 minute hike and get up here. All right, guys, welcome to the Las Vegas of Asia. Let's party. Let's check it out. So this is the main road here, which uh, I showed you guys already a little bit earlier today. So my hotel is right over there and we are now at the beginning of the area. All right, we are inside the Venetian casino now and we are going to try Chinese beer. <laughs> have you tried this before? I have. You have? Okay, for me it's actually the first time trying this, which I believe is the most popular beer in China. I think so. Or the most well-known sure one? the most common. Yeah. Okay, Ivana doesn't want to have a beer? Yeah. All right, cheers. Cheers. Chinese beer in Macau. Actually, Ger pretty good. German yeah. taste buds, pretty yeah. good. Plus, uh, as we know, green bottles, always the best beer. It's <laughs> <laughs> a Steve theory of beer, but it tends to be true. All right, we are out here now on the main road. Everything is lit up now because it's uh, dark already. And the good news is, so we just gambled a little bit, but the good news is we didn't lose any money yet. We broke, we broke even. So far. Yeah. It's like Vegas, but it's much more clean and sort of see. Vegas can be a bit rough. Yeah. You know? So quite fancy. Yeah. Quite so nice. Las Vegas but more fancy. Yeah. Right. Fancy. Yeah, yeah. Less party. Less party. Less party. Vegas five. is about getting wasted and going crazy. Yeah, yeah. That was about gambling thousands and thousands <laughs> yeah. of dollars. Yeah, you don't really have a party theme here. Like you explained earlier that in Las Vegas you can find beer and cocktails everywhere. everywhere. Like right here in the street someone would come up and say, You wanna buy a beer? Yeah you don't really see that here. No you don't see that. Yeah. yeah. So it's more fancy here, yeah. less partying, more about gambling. So the idea is now getting some food and then continue with more gambling. Okay, so this is a very impressive lobby area here as well. And then we have the casino area right here where we are going to try our luck now. Okay, and about two hours later and we had a lot of fun gambling here. That was amazing. Awesome night. Okay, my friends have left home and I am actually hungry now. And we do have a food court here, which is here. Yeah, I'm back at the, um, the mall next to my hotel or in the same building at my hotel. And we do have lots of delicious options here. Lots of Chinese food, of course, but you can also find a little bit of international food. Like I saw Singapore food, for example, over there. This one seems to be Taiwanese cuisine, but I see braised pork rice here which I usually really like and Taiwanese food is actually very delicious. I've never been to Taiwan before, but I tried a lot of Taiwanese food before. I would like to have the braised pork rice. Huh? Uh, pork rice. Okay, so for the total price of 95, I got a huge bowl of pork rice and then an extra Sprite on the side and a little bit of jelly pudding and actually let me take a picture for Instagram really quick yeah by the way guys if you're not following me on Instagram yet feel free to do so can abroad on Instagram I'm posting daily stories you can see behind the scenes see my live locations where I am at the moment oh that smells delicious here oh Taiwanese food is so delicious and I'm saying that without ever being in Taiwan so I guess that the authentic original food in Taiwan will be even better then. Wow, we have little mushrooms here. Some pickled vegetables, I think. Oh, a bit sour, a sour taste to it. And we even have uh, some peanuts here as well. And I'm actually not sure what this is. Mm, if you know, let me know. It tastes very sour. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments. Can't really identify what it is, but it's not bad. And maybe, I'm supposed to mix it all together. But yeah, just the, the pork with the rice, it's so good. And yeah, of course, the prices here are a bit high, but I mean, you see where we are. 
So you kind of expect that, right? And to be honest, I would have expected the prices to be even higher. I mean, there are also like proper fancy restaurants here where the price is definitely higher. But every mall, every building here also has a food court like this where the prices are a bit lower. Okay, so I am back in my hotel room. I am sitting here now, enjoying the view, having a little drink, some chocolates, and then just enjoying and admiring the beautiful view over the road here. Everything is nicely lit up now. Very nice, just sitting here, listening to some music, enjoying the view. And good morning, and it is a beautiful morning here. The sun is shining. I am in a very good mood. I just uh, packed everything up. I'm going to check out in a few minutes, and then I'm actually heading to a new place. But that is still a secret for you guys, but I am very excited. What I really like about the hotel here is these uh, blackout curtains. So you can totally block out all the lights. So that was really, really good actually. If you are a light sleeper, blackout curtains are really nice to have. And yeah, was it worth the almost $150 that I paid here for the night? Of course, that is a lot of money for one night only and I didn't even have breakfast included. But I mean, it is a very luxurious stay here. You saw all the facilities, the view is phenomenal here. So if you wanna treat yourself with a nice hotel stay, this is a great experience. And yeah, overall, Macau is a very interesting, diverse place to visit. I can highly recommend to come to Macau. And if you are curious to see my previous video where I was still in mainland China, then feel free to check out the video right here. Stay healthy, stay positive, and then see you on the next episode. Ciao, guys.